offer. So we reposted, and um, I have to say, these the second round we had a, a much better group of candidates, so it was very exciting. Um, it was so good that we had two applicants that were exceptional, um, very different, but had very relevant experience, and um, I think would fit in very well with our team. Um, so one of the things we were talking about was to offer the position to both of them and have two public health nurses. Um, in the obviously in the short term, uh, you know that would be a huge help for the department. Um, and in the long term, um, we always have things that we want to do that we just don't have the capacity to do. And we could bring in new programs and um, more preventative <coughs> services and more community health services. So I think it's a huge um, opportunity to really um, increase the, the services for the community. Um, two important things, well, I guess important things about funding, of course. So um, with the CARES Act funding, the town is receiving quite a large sum of money. And so that would be able to support the salary of the position for two years. Um, and then after the two years, it would either be absorbed into the budget or, you know, we are always looking at grant opportunities and different funding sources. So. We could explore other options, but um, you know the, the plan would be to absorb into the regular budget the salary and other expenses. So I guess what we would be looking for is um, the board's thoughts on that, and then I think we would need to vote to um, add the position. The funding, so the funding for one of the positions will be in our regular operating expenses. It's been budgeted already. And the second is actually grant funding, so it's not um, it's an allocation we have to technically vote on. Um, but I think increasing the position should be a vote. What is that? I'm going to get up and just close the slider because I can't hear. Oh, okay. That might be it. I think we're taking it to each other. Oh, okay. Maybe that's it. Hello. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Chagall, um, Go so ahead. You're looking for a vote right now. Did you just put that to a vote, or did you want us to vote on the two positions now? Or uh, yeah, yeah, I think we should vote on um, adding the position to the department. Okay, I make a motion. Karen, when, when be, before we do that, um, before we do that, when do we um, suppose that we're going to be able to meet these two people? Um, we will give them offers today, hopefully, if the board votes on that, and then um, we can meet them at our next meeting if they accept. Okay. And you'll be able to review the, the resumes and everything. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of like, well, the way we did it before was that we, we met them at a meeting and then we voted at that meeting, you know, how things go. I know things are um, a little backwards nowadays with this coronavirus but um okay i guess we well, can do it we wanted to do the reason we decided we would vote this way is because this is a little different because we needed to vote that it's okay with everybody that we hire two okay hiring one and so um we didn't want to make any offers to anybody until such time as we the board decided that it was okay to hire two and then the office would be made. And then at our next meeting, which is in a couple of weeks, um, we would approve their, we'll get to meet them and we would approve their hiring. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Do, do either of you have any questions about? No, I trust everybody's judgment on that. Uh, where, yeah. where are we gonna house these two people? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Um, it was kind of something that we think we'll figure out in the future. I think at this point, a lot of people are going to be working virtually. So it's something we can- I mean, that office is very that small that Stacy's in now. <laughs> um, one thing we did sort of say is um, have that, the office that Stacy's in that was shared with the public health nurse, make that for both the nurses and then uh, maybe relocate Stacy somewhere. But, or maybe, you know, there's some opportunity with the old light department building um, to expand into there. Um, so th there's some discussions, but nothing decided yet. Okay. Stace, what do you feel? Would you like to stay in the office you're in and move the other people around? I had it muted because just to, because there was a noise. Oh. I, didn't um, want I feel that. that the two nurses so, should stay together. Yeah, the nurses should stay together. Um, and you should be in that office by yourself. Maybe we can put them in the Walter Ryan room or something. Right. We're, um, the town has offered space. We'll find space for them. But yes, they should be kept together. 
um, either I'll move out or they can have my office or I stay where I am and we put them in a setup <laughs> down the hall um, in one of those rooms. But um, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll work on that. I think the most important part is getting them on board and getting them moving because okay. um, with camps and then um oh, yeah this yeah there's there's a lot for them to do and we need to get them on board does this impact jen in any way their workload does this impact jen anymore no their work does not impact jennifer as far as she she's going to be doing more work no because they're they're going to be doing the work so right now okay. jen's helping me so um if anything it'll probably help jen because now jen doesn't have to field on calls and kind of work as my what she's doing now so they'll be able to do that they'll enter everything in the computer they're going to do the inspection it's it, it won't it won't cause any work for anyone in the department it's going okay. to be a help for the department well well i think when joni and kathy and i have talked and i i, I shouldn't be speaking for them but we're very concerned with the the amount of work that you and sagal are doing into the late hours i mean way beyond five o'clock so i think we're all on board with bringing these people into create you know some kind of lessening of your intensity with this virus and what everything else is going on and who knows if it's coming back i mean there are things change as i read from the emails i get every day so every day you and Sagal, Sagal and stacy doing intensity changing and trying to put these things together um so i i i'm on board with the two of them as asap thank you and there is going to be a little bit of a learning curve with both of them just because they don't know our town and they don't know exactly the job that they'll be doing. So, you know, Stacy, Seagal, Jen, Angelo, everybody will be kind of all together helping them to learn the job that they're going to need to do. And um, they're both very well educated. They both um, have a lot to bring to the table. Um, which is kind of nice because we'll have some new ideas, hopefully flow to the health department and get some more programs running that we haven't been able to do in the past because we really didn't have enough people to do. Them. No. Uh, so does somebody want to make a motion? We'll do a vote. I'll make the motion that we uh, hire both of them. Okay. I, I second them. Okay. And um, we all have to verbally give our say so Carolyn aye Joan aye and myself Kathy Bishop aye all in favor aye aye, aye of the two nurses <laughs> that was thank you okay what are their names to go um Nick? well I, I want to do we can we submit the offers and then let you know to see if they accept I don't know if, well, I don't think either of them are currently employed, but I wouldn't want their employer to know. So are going to put those in today? Yeah. Later on today? Good. Yeah. Right when they, right when they respond to us, I will let the board know. And then, um, Joan, Thank like you. you said, we'll take the vote at the next meeting. Okay. Um, so I think I, Travis. Off, offline, I can tell them the, the names. I just don't want to publicize it out there yet because we haven't made official offers. So. Okay. Yeah, and I can send the resumes too. Oh, good. Um, is Travis back with us? I think he's back. He Travis. just called me. Travis, can you hear us? Uh, I don't know if it's on. I just think he's having some technical difficulty. He keeps logging back and up, back and forth. Okay. Well, we'll give him a few minutes. Can you hear us, Travis? Texting me. Maybe you could join us by phone if he's having trouble. Yeah. Um, Carolyn, did you want to bring up some issues, some topics you said? Sure. I, um, I you know, my me, my issues are going to go on and on. Um, I have a, a question. Um, two parents called me this morning, found out that Babe Ruth baseball has been signed on. 
I said, I knew nothing about it, uh, but I would discuss it because I had a board meeting. So has Babe Ruth been approved for, I believe they told me that they submitted a form to Travis and Travis submitted it to the, to, I believe you, Sagal, did we approve this? So it's not really something we approve. So the way it works is uh, youth sports can start in phase two with some restrictions. So when the governor and the reopening plan is established, certain things can open in certain phases. Um, everybody has to have a control plan and they have to put in measures. We don't actually approve those. What we do is if we get a complaint, then we respond and we ask for that information. So it's the same with businesses, with the- um, Okay, did we get an yeah. approval? Did we get a format from Babe Ruth saying what they're- Travis shared the information, but I don't really, none of us really approve it. You know, I look at it and if they have questions, definitely I can answer it. Okay. Um, but it's the same with, with uh, hair salons, um, you know, retails opening in, in phase two. So it's not like we have to approve all these plans that, that keep coming in. Or okay, so that was my mistake. I thought it had to be approved. Yeah, no, it would just be overwhelming if we had to approve every business and operation that was reopening. Okay. As long as they follow the governor's guidelines, they should be fine. Right. If they have questions- so Where do we find the guidelines? So the, so the parents, where do they find the guidelines? At the Civic? Um, it's a combination, mostly on the state website. Um, they're like we talk about, not everything is covered on the state website. For example, we're still waiting for guidelines on pools. Then we defer to the CDC guidelines. Um, but we, ex you know, um, with youth sports, it's um, uh, EEA, and I'm blanking on what that means, but there, there are guidelines from other agencies, but it's all through the state. So yes, the state has guidelines for most operations in one way or another. So this is going to be up and running. That's great. Kids need something to do. And I think that they, if they follow the guidelines, it will be, will be great to have that happen for the youth. Yeah, as long as they do it in a safe way, which, you know, which they are. And if people have questions, they can definitely reach out to, to the health department. We can guide them through the process. And also if they have concerns, if they see something going on that they don't think is right, um, that's why we're here also to respond to those. Yes. Okay. Um, outdoor dining? Um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to communicate with Travis at the same time. Sandy, um, Travis is having a hard time logging on. Is it possible you could work with him? He says he can't get audio even when he calls in. It just hangs up on him when he puts in the, the uh, pin code. Um, sorry, Carolyn, go ahead. Don't be ridiculous. You want me to go ahead or wait for Travis? Um, oh. Well, he can't get in, so I'm hoping Sandy can help him. So <clears throat> outdoor dining. <laughs> What do we have to do? The, the selectmen put it in place and passed it. Um, there's no public, <clears throat> I talked to Mr. Bishop, our chairman, and they're putting forth, they're gonna reconsider um, alcohol on the sidewalk. Is that correct, Kathy? Do you know that? I think the governor just came down with some kind of special legislation yesterday. I don't know all the details about it, um, but I know that the selectmen have a meeting tonight and I'm sure it's gonna be brought up at that meeting as. I, I think it's going to be approved, and I think it's something that the local um, towns make up a decision about how they're going to do it and what's in so, do, so does the town buy the chairs for everybody to sit outside, or do the, does the owner buy them? Yeah, the it's going to be that's going to be on the owners that I'm aware of. They're going to buy their own tables and chairs. Okay, and, one was one was um, when they called me. One was understood that that the town was going to supply the chairs for outside i said you know i th i think you should call the selectmen and, and define that so it's the owners yeah i i think there's two I, processes yeah there's there's the outdoor dining regulations which is um th what the selectmen had voted on which allows them to set up um a seating area right in front of their establishment and yes um, allow you some parking spaces or whether you're like a large establishment on route one you can use your parking lot um, and then there's the issue of closing Central Street. Um, and now I think they're also talking about Washington on, um, on a weekend on Saturday. And that, in that scenario, I think the town will supply tables and chairs. But that's right, for because communal use. There's no table service Friday and Saturday, Sunday. It's just takeout from a restaurant, and then you go sit at these tables. Right. There's no that's food service, as I understood, for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday when they close the streets. Well, not, yeah, when they close the streets, that's sort of communal. Yeah, I don't think there's table service. There's no sort of table service. It's just grab your food to go and go sit at your tables. But the sidewalk, each restaurant is serving individually. Correct. Right? That which will start okay. in phase two. Right. Phase two. 
And I think it's also, I think a part of that is up to um, each of the owners it, that they can put their tables out there, but they don't necessarily all have to serve to the tables that are outside their restaurants. They can, they can specifically do it to their, to their own needs and say, these tables are here for you to buy your takeout and sit here and eat, but we will not be coming out to serve you, that type of. That's not all. I think it's each individual because some of them, some of them don't have the, the capacity to be able to have a server bring things out to them. And so that's these are all the things that have to be worked out. Right. That's what they're working on. And um, I think a lot of that will be brought forward tonight at the, um, the selectmen's meeting. So I know they're working on it and they're trying to get it, get these businesses back out there for the summer weather and stuff. So that's all I know. Okay. About. Next one, Sagal Biggie, town meeting. Did you approve the uh, setup for town meeting? You did a great job in Stacy with the requirements for, for the high school. Let me compliment you both because I've heard nothing but good things. And I know that you work both up very highly on getting the requirements to, um, um, to, that would maintain social distancing and everything. And it worked out very, very well. I think the town was very pleased with that. So thank you for that. So town meeting, three people call. Are you having town meeting? Are, are you okay? Are you comfortable? We comfortable with that? So I, I don't think I need, well, first of all, congratulations to all the high school graduates I did here. It was a great graduation and the, the school did a fantastic job coming up with that plan. I really just guided the um, little details here and there. Um, to make sure there's proper social distancing, but they did a fantastic job on that. And uh, congratulations to um, Dr. Hughes too. Also, he did a great job with that plan. Yeah, he did great. So um, same scenario with town meeting. Um, there's a group talking about it. No final decisions have been made as far as how it's going to be run. Um, there's discussions of indoor and outdoor and location. Um, sort of the way I see our role is to make sure it's done in a safe manner. So um, whatever the decision of the group is, we will go through a similar control plan and make sure that there's controls and measure in, in place to allow for social distancing, require face coverings, to make sure that the risk is as low as possible. I always tell people you can never get to zero risk. There's risks in any scenario. Um, we continue to see the numbers drop though. We saw a huge drop this week in our local case numbers and the state continues to see favorable indicators. And that's why, you know, fingers crossed, we go to phase two on Monday. Um, so this week is actually really big to figure out what the virus is doing in our community as we start to open up. This week is kind of the week we, we learn how things went with phase one. Um, so I think by the time town meeting gets here, we'll be well into phase two is, is the hope. And a lot of things will be open. I mean, you'll be able to shop in retail stores. So I think the environment will change a lot. Um, and you can, can you assure the community that the voting is going to be also very well um, geared for protection for them when so that when they go out and vote tell them what you know maybe has happened that so that they will know some people don't have computers so they they can't resource any of the stuff that we put on there yeah we um we have a very good plan for our touchless election um where every uh, person that comes to vote is going to get their own kit um, with their own pen um, gloves and masks face covering um, and there's also protections for the workers. We have the plexiglass up and uh, we're gonna make sure that everybody maintains social distancing. Um, so there's very good control measures for the election. We wanna encourage everybody to go out and vote. Thank you, that's all I ask is that everybody stays informed that they, have, that they are our first concern with, with all these processes. Thank you, thank you, stay, thanks Keith. Go ahead, Kath, I'm done. I think, do we have Travis? Nope, not yet. We did, we did when I was jamming. I saw him for a second there. I don't know. Well, maybe we can just discuss a little bit of the reg recommendations ourselves. And um, when he's able to come on, he can maybe better explain it a little bit. Um, I will. I just, my biggest concerns is that we, are we going to, I mean, there's been a lot of work put into these re recommendations, but I'm still on the fence. Um, I'm concerned about how they're going to work. Um, I'm concerned about keeping people safe, um, especially the kids, because now we're seeing this other surge of, or not surge necessarily, but 
we're seeing um, kids being affected in a different way. And I, I, in my heart, I don't want to see anybody get sick, whether it be an adult or a child. And so I just I really need for Travis to tell us how these are going to work and how how he anticipates making them or getting them to work or and what happens if they don't work? What do we do? So I can talk about it a little bit. Um, he just is so much better at speaking about it, and that's why I was <laughs> hoping we could talk directly to you about it. Yeah. But um, so very and first, let control. the town know that we have two pools. Some people don't know that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have two pools and um, what we sort of has talked about is that in order to do one, in order to do it properly, we really only have the capacity to open one because there are so much more, um, not only staff needs, but just controls and cleaning protocols um, that need to happen and the, the condition of the facility. Um, you know, we have a brand new bathhouse at Haas that is a lot easier to keep um, clean and to maintain. Uh, we had Father Max, unfortunately, the bathhouse is, is in rough condition and it just makes it harder to um, to clean and sanitize according to CDC guidelines. Yeah. Um, so one thing, it'll be controlled as far as the number of people in the pool. Um, the number will be drastically reduced. People will have to pre-register. Travis, are you there? Hey, you. Okay. All right, so I'll keep going, but Travis, if you, once, once you get it working, just interrupt me. Um, so people will have to pre-register online if, um, or they'll have an iPad at the pool, um, a completely touchless registration process. Um, only families will be able to register and they register for a time. They come in and they're designated for an area on the deck and they're also designated in a lane in the pool. Um, so there's no interaction between household family, you know, between other households and families. Is, is families there a limit to how many, is there a limit to how many people in the family can be in that lane? Uh, no, because uh, as long as you're in a household family, there's no uh, risk of exposure because you already live together, but the, you wouldn't be able to cross with other households. Okay, so, I mean, there are families out there that have a large m number of children, um, you know, is there a 10 person limit to a lane or? Um, so that'd be, I think I've got to throw that one to Travis. I don't think so, but there's an overall limit to the amount of people in the pool area. Right. So let's say, I think the limit was, was 20. Is this 20? Yeah. And the you have a family. 20. Limit is 20. And you have a family of 10. You know, I don't know how many families of 10 we have, but you have a family of 10. You can only have 10 other people. So whether that's two or three more families, that's all you can have. So that's a consideration when the booking is being placed, when they're requesting a time. A lot of jigsaw going on. Yeah, for sure. Um, restrictions in the locker rooms um, to the number of people that can go in and the number of facilities that are open, and that's because they have to be cleaned so regularly too. Mm -hmm. So any, um, they lowered it to two stalls and two bathrooms and two showers, and then those will be cleaned every time they're used. So it's like one group goes in, you know, they use it, they move out, it gets cleaned before the next group comes in. Um, so very, uh, very thorough cleaning and sanitation measures. And, and is and, shelling and, mandatory uh, going into the pools? Excuse me, Kathy. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So there's something going on with go-to meeting that nobody can call in. That's what, um, what's just written in the notes. Oh, okay. Um, large increase in staffing and also safety for the staffing. So lifeguards wearing face coverings. Um, they're going to be social distancing six foot apart. Um, there will be social distancing monitors, so additional staff just making sure that everybody's following the rules. Um, and they're, they're going to schedule the staff in um, shifts like A, B, and C, so there's no crossing of staff. So, you know, in the, in the, in the chance that there is a positive case, it doesn't, um, it's very controlled as to who was exposed to that individual. And this is similar that we see in other control plans, whether it be for camps or other operations is you don't want to constantly be mixing people. You want to have a set group that always works together. Um, mm -hmm. So if there is an exposure, it's limited to just that group. And it's a smaller amount of people. Okay. Now, my question is, is if this is over with, supposedly, and all pools can open and whatnot, are, are there any plans to open um, Haas Pool? Not, uh, you know, um, the one down the street, Kathy. Uh, the Max. Uh, the Max. Yeah, I mean, let's be optimistic. Let's if things continue to trend very well and we can really re go back on the restrictions. Um, you know, I don't know what 
capacity Travis has in the rec department to expand it. But um, let's say we don't need to social distance anymore. I, to be honest, I, I don't think that's going to happen. But yeah. um, if we really yeah. pulled back the restrictions and we go back to sort of the new normal, they call it, um, I don't know if they have the capacity to open both because I, I still think there'll be requirements for for cleaning and sanitizing and social distancing. I don't think in the, the summer we're going to see back to regular life without any control yeah. measures, to be honest. Okay. Okay, That's how are we going to handle? Them. How are we going to handle people questioning us? <laughs> so, what's so the question? Is so if they're asking why are we doing this? Yeah. So he's how calling. Me. Maybe we can do this how over speaker phone. Um, let me see if we can figure out the way to do it. Hold on, I'm sorry. No. Okay. I mean, that's a good question because ninety percent of the people, like you say, say, "Why are you doing this?" Yeah. And the answer to that is because we feel it's safe and it's within the guidelines and we feel that we can open the pools with the safety of the community, which has to be first, Joni. The community, like Kathy and I said, the safety of the kids and families going into that is um, is yeah. our first choice. I mean. Right. Um, I mean, so Travis said when I spoke to him said that oh you know we we want to make sure kids don't sneak in and blah blah blah. I said, Travis, I grew up in South Nolan. I can tell you how to uh, break into his pool in a second. You know, or swim in there at night. Right. right. Well, the guy also discussed. You know, I, I don't know if this is something that will happen or not, but um, I don't want the town to be held responsible for somebody getting sick either and right. you know um are we going to have some kind of a release that they that they sign or something that they not necessarily release but a sign that they they say they're going swim to at their own guidelines. swim at their own yeah that swim they swim at their own they're right. going to follow the guidelines um or they'll be asked to leave um i just i have questions about how do we do that in the event that you have a hot day and you have a lot of people that want to be in the pool and then all of a sudden you have people coming up just demanding that they're going to be in the pool and yeah i understand you can have monitors there i get that but what's the plan in place if you get overwhelmed on a really hot day of a lot of people saying i'm going in that pool whether you say i can or not i paid my money i'm going um, Kathy, I have Travis on speakerphone next to my computer. So let's see if this works. He can hear okay. you. Um, Travis, can you? can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. So I'm very, very sorry. That's okay. Uh, I have tried seven different ways to connect to this meeting, and none of the audio will connect. I don't know why. I've tried two different phones and three different iPads. Uh, nothing works. Well, well, we'll try this way anyway. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. so you know, Travis, we have we have the guidelines in front of us that you sent out, and basically, we just want you to kind of tell us how you think this is going to work and what safeguards are going to be in place so that. Nobody gets harmed. We don't want any children to get harmed. We don't want any people to get sick. Um, I guess we just want you to tell us how you think this is going to work. Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you for giving me the time. Um, I know we work very, very, very hard to come up with these guidelines. Um, we've been following the CDC guidelines, the ACA guidelines. We've even gone so far to sit on other state phone calls with the CDC um, to listen to figure out how they're doing. We've listened to Texas in particular um, because their pools are actually really open. Um, so there was a good deal of thought that went behind these plans. Um, obviously, the first and foremost would be the closure of Father Max for one season. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the difficulties to keep that pool clean, sanitized, and follow the CDC rules and regulations would be a very big challenge. Uh, the, the, obviously, the bathhouse is a, is a huge, huge hurdle, uh, and this would allow us to really focus on keeping Haas um, clean, safe, um, and give the residents a 
for the summer. Um, does anybody have any questions on that closure of FM? No, I, 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 I agree with you on that. It's not, um, it's the much older pool. The bathhouse is um, deplorable to say the least. And yeah. that wouldn't make it easy for, for us to do those. So I, I agree to that it's okay to just have one pool open, um, yeah. but at least for this season anyways. Yeah, Travis, when you when you said ADA, do you mean American Disabilities Act? Yes. So yes. we can get somebody handicapped in a wheelchair into Haas Pool. Correct. That's another Thank big you. one. If uh, Father Max does not have that, uh, that, that's, that yeah, is, uh, that's one thing. My Father Max would be out. Yeah. Okay. I think that that part of the plan is agreeable to the board. Um, I guess I I just. Our concerns are how are we going to really make this work when you have a really hot day um, and people don't want to go by the, they paid their money and they just want to go in the pool the way they want to go in. How are you going to, how are you going to stop that? How are you going to prevent it? Yep. Um, so I, I'm going to just work through the numbers and then I'll address everything hopefully as we go. Is that, is that okay? Oh, yep. It's fine. Yep. <clears throat> So the, the locker rooms at Hawes, um, we're going to limit to two per um, unit. Um, we're going to close all the stalls but two. Um, we're only going to have um, two showers open. Um, and we are going to place bathroom monitors um, outside the bathrooms to make sure that we, uh, we are forcing the two at a time. Um, if you look at the schedule, it's basically open for an hour and closed for a half hour. This makes cleaning the bathrooms a heck of a lot easier when you only have spaces to make sure that they're sanitized and clean. Uh, and those so, will be, Travis, yeah, excuse me yeah. before we go on, those will be documented? The times uh, yeah. that you clean the bathroom and the, they'll be yeah. documented? Half hour with some initials and make sure that, uh, make sure that it's being followed. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Um, and facility recommendations. Um, obviously, we're going to have to restrict the bathing load. Um, the CDC is actually recommended, and I could be wrong, so y'all can correct me, um, that most pools go back to 25, or all pools go back to 25% of the bathing load, which would for us be about 25 people. So, um, yeah, so that, that would be a, that's something we will be enforcing. Um, we are going to mark off the pool deck um, so that way when people arrive, they will be assigned a portion of the pool deck. That will be every 12 feet. Um, so if I'm a family of four, I'm a Farley family, I register, I show up, um, I would pre-register to come and kind of get it myself. And you would be assigned a, um, a portion of the pool deck. Um, and then when you get in the pool, you be assigned a lane. So we, we have six lanes in the pool. You would be assigned a side line, lane one, and you'd be in that lane, and you'd be assigned uh, a portion of the deck as well. Um, and then um, every, if you look at the schedule as well, every hour that we open, we're closed for a half hour. Uh, and that's when we're going to be tackling all the handrails, uh, the bathrooms, make sure everything's clean, the high traffic areas as well. Um, we're hopefully going to, we are going to have an exit and an entrance to the pool so people can come in and out. Um, and that's kind of the facility recommendations. Does anybody have any questions on that? Um, are they going to have to sign a liability release, um, Travis, <laughs> in order to um, be going into the pool? In other words, if somebody um, ends up getting COVID and says that they got it at the pool, that they, the town is going to be liable. Is there any way that we can have them sign a release? in order to use the pool? We, we certainly can. My, my hope was that, um, and I'm, I'll jump ahead here. So we, our, our goal is to have no cash change hands. Um, we are going to encourage all residents to pre-register for that hour block of time. So if I'm in Farley family, I would go online and we'll have our management system, direct management system. I would sign up for the one o'clock swim time. And the gate attendant at the pool will have that will um, be updated simultaneously when they register. So our, our rec management system is all web-based. Um, so if, if they, they can actually go on their phone and do it at the pool if they want to, if there's space, 
So that way there's no cats changing hands, no pens. Um, we don't really want cats obviously changing hands and anything to make it completely seamless. Um, does that make sense? So we can we can make the waiver like a, a, a portion of what you register, you click off a waiver so you have to read it uh, before you actually sign up for it. That's not a problem. Yeah, I do have an, it, wait a minute, Joan, I have an issue with, what about people who don't have computer or phone access? Right. What if they come to the pool and want to pre-register? Will What if they say they want to get in at that point in time? Will they be told, no, you can't come in at this point in time, you're going to get another time at that point? I mean, I see a lot of people that won't have access to a phone or a computer. Yep. Um, I, after we talked to Seagal the last time we met, um, I actually would like to try to get one of those credit card swipes um, that you get for an iPad. Uh, for, and I'm going to work on that. I just don't want cash changing hands. If they want to do a credit card swipe, it's easy, it's seamless. That way, if you do show up and there is space, um, you can pay right there with a credit card or debit card. Um, but people won't have that. Some people won't have that. Um, we're very diverse. Some people won't have that. I mean, to get into the pool. So, but we'll make exceptions at the time. We'll make something. You know, I, yeah. I, those uh, are uh, as well. Okay. Uh, I guess what I'm asking is, are you going to set aside maybe a couple of times during a day? that if you do this, that you're going to allow people that don't have access to a phone or a computer or don't have a credit card that they can, I mean, say you get a 90 degree day and people just decide, okay, I'm going to go to the pool today and I don't have a credit card. I don't have a phone. I'm going to go down and see if I can get in. What if they get angry at you or say, I want to get in this pool today and you say, no, then what do you do? I mean, it's, it's, it happens every summer. I feel like uh, you can say people at high school. Um, I, just didn't, I wanted to avoid the whole free for all. Like we could open it up and say the first twenty five that are there are there, and you get in. Uh, okay. I'm just worried that you have 150 people or 200 people show up at the pool, and then you're only taking 25 for an hour. Right. Uh, that's kind of what we want to want to avoid. Uh, yeah. uh, we can definitely reserve a couple spots, maybe if they don't have. They want to show up, and we are going to make the the hour swim very affordable, like two dollars. Nothing, nothing that's going to be. Uh, so we want to make this as affordable as we can. Um, it's just a hard line to walk. You're trying to uh, make sure it's as safe as possible, and to make sure you don't have huge crowds outside the pool. And to mitigate okay. that, we, we thought maybe pre-registration might be the best route. And maybe I can suggest um, if people don't have those resources, whether it be the computer or the credit card, they could reach out to the rec department and we could deal with that on a case by case basis and figure out a right. way to get registered. So maybe just calling the rec department and um, we can handle those on an individual basis. So this, okay, Kathy, go ahead. You finish. Are, yeah. we gonna, are we gonna advertise this somehow so that people are aware of it ahead of time? Are we gonna maybe put up some sign? I know, you know, like I said, there are people that don't have computers, don't have phones. Is it going to be advertised how they access the pool at the pool somewhere? I don't know. I'm probably going to go, you guys will laugh, I'm probably going to go really side crazy this summer for obvious reasons. So we're probably going to have a couple late frame signs at the pool, uh, maybe some signage on Washington Street on the fence. Uh, once the graduation uh, sign comes down, um, and we're going to do obviously social media, uh, so we are, we're we're going to be pretty signed up this year with advertising. Um, yeah, so we will be going postage everywhere. And also, Travis, you have sort of access to a database of you know rec department families and users that you can yes. access to. So we have a very large database for users, and I was, we're probably going to be sending out. We're, we're hoping to make it uh, a program, summer program flyer, a pool flyer. Um, that will go out hopefully next week or so when we finalize everything, hopefully, um, about, uh, about all the information that we're talking about. Pool limitations, pool schedules, where to sign up, when to sign up, um, and all that, all that good stuff. Okay. I just have one. 
<clears throat> excuse me, uh, Travis, I know this is redundant because you and I have spoken, but my concern is that what Kathy brought up and I brought up to you before that an 18 year old cannot have a conflict with an adult. They're going to lose that battle. So is there going to be a, a an adult in any of this capacity around the pool to handle all the cations like that? Because a young, you know, 17 year old, 18 year old lifeguard can't handle that confrontation with somebody being very aggressive. So uh, will we have an adult and all the sessions down there? Correct. So now that we're consolidating down the water pool, we actually have an aquatic director, Catherine Lee, an assistant aquatic director, Leah Gay. Uh, and on top of that, the Heroes program that had some paraprofessionals um, up there, I'm hoping to have staff the gate uh, as well. Um, so we're going to have at least one adult at the gate at all times um, to combat that with a hopefully a high school kid as well, uh, practicing social distancing. Um, and actually, thank you for bringing that up. One thing that we're going to be adding to the pool deck itself is actually social distancing monitors because the CDC has said, for obvious reasons, you don't want lifeguards um, trying to do social distancing. Um, you are worried about safety so, and, and, and watching over the pool. So we're going to be adding social distance monitors to the pool deck as well. In their ages, are they going to be high school kids or are they going to be, a, you know, over the age of 21? Um, guards or uh, guards slash professionals from... Um, the schools. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Dom, do you have some questions? Um, I notice here that uh, are we going to open the splash pool? Uh, uh, we talked to Sigal about that, and I don't think we are going to. Okay. And the reason being is that the go ahead. The reason being is that the water is not chlorinated. There's, yeah, you hit it on the head. The water's not chlorinated, and it just gets really challenging to enforce social distancing, especially if that age group would be using it. Uh, yep. It would be very, very challenging. Okay. okay. We talked about the challenges cleaning it on a re regular basis. Correct. Okay. I just no, have one. I agree with that. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I so if, if you have some camps in place down at Haas, are they going to be able to use the pool during the day? Yes, so if you look at the schedule, the first two blocks after uh, senior swim would be camps. Uh, okay. uh, there would be smaller groups. Um, I think we're only going to have a handful of camps at Hobbs at, at anyway. At least they do a time. Is there, is there not going to be a camp at Father Max? I'm sorry, say it again? Is there not going to be a camp at Father Max? Uh, the camp plan that we're doing with Sigala is, uh, is multiple locations to keep the numbers down. Uh, okay. and you kind of spread kids out. So I think we're hopefully going to have a location at Father Max. We're going to have a, a location at Oz, and then we're going to be adding a third location, uh, maybe at Willett. I'm working with Mr. Ricari from the school department uh, to work that out. So we're hopefully going to be adding another location to just to make sure to spread the camps out a little bit. Obviously, we have to keep the numbers below 12. And, and uh, make sure that everybody kind of keeps their distance. Well, how, how is that going to be enforced? How many people are going to be in each camp right now, Travis, if you have a regular? I mean, are there going to be 40 kids in a camp, 20 kids? Do we have a limit for that set already? Uh, yeah, we, so it's going to be, and again, this is going to be a, a, a small summer. So instead of like 350 to 400 kids in a given week, we'll have uh, like 120, 130 kids. It's going to be more small. So our junior play program, which is K through one, um, we're going to have 30 kids. Uh, our, our play camp, which we usually have a, like 160 in a week at two locations, we're probably going to have 50. And these are spread out at different locations, no shared equipment. Um, mm -hmm. Accounts are forever be uh, 10 kids. And so let me just uh, clar clarify that. Sorry, I was jumping in. Um, they'll be in small groups. They won't be in those large groups of 30 to 40 kids. They'll be in groups of where we say 10, including the counselors. Yeah, correct. And they won't, they won't intermingle. Will there be a first come, first serve basis? Say it again? Will it be a first come, first serve sign up that the kids can get to go to camp? Uh, we are going to uh, put it, we're going to advertise it. We're going to put it I'm losing you, Travis. Sorry, go ahead. Um, 
Do you think that that two hour window for camps is going to be enough? I mean, you seem to have a four hour window for public swim. Is two hours going to be enough if you have three different camps? And a total of, you know, a total of about 100 kids with all three camps. Are you going to have enough time in that two-hour window? Yes, that's usually what we do. And not having swimming lessons, that's the other piece, helps us out because that should give us more time for camps. Uh, but we're not going to have, we're not going to have any kids there. So we want to give the public the afternoon. Like you said, if it's a really hot day, yep. uh, I have to try to meet them after lunch. And okay. I'll, Okay. One more question. I keep looking down at my notes. Um, Sagal, you had said 10 kids per, thank you, Travis, for the pool information. Sagal, you had said 10 kids per counselor. Is that, is that what I understand? Uh, no, well, there's the ratios and then there's the small groups that they're keeping separated. So there'll be little okay, kids. Are these, are these kids going to be masked over the ages of four? We're, so actually the guidance just came out yesterday from the state about camps. Um, so we're still going through that, but I think we asked okay. Did you bring a face covering, Travis, and help me out? Did we? Counselors are definitely going to be wearing them, all the adults. Um, and the kids will have them, right, Travis, if they need to. Wear them. It's going to be optional. Our, our counselors, we're, uh, we're going to have a lot, a lot, not a, just a lot of the surgical disposal masks uh, that our counselors will be wearing. Um, we're going to ask them to wear them. Uh, and uh, we'll be yeah, out. So that's something we are going to ask them to do. But the kids will be on. Are we going to? Gonna um, discuss it with Sigal either because they just came out yesterday. Okay, are we going to be checking temperatures of these kids when they come to camp each day? That was part of the guidance that was issued yesterday. Yeah, there'd be a screening process in the morning for each each camper. Okay, okay so that would include questions and answers. Have you been in contact with COVID to the parent? That the, like Joni said, temperature. Has anybody in your family been had COVID or have you been quarantined? Those questions will be answered by the parent. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. I can send that out to the board too. Oh, I would love that. Thank you. Are there, are there any other camp questions? Um, no, not camp, not from me anyways. I don't know. Joan, do you have any camp questions? No, I think everything has been pretty much answered. Um, you know, good luck with that. I think it's going to be tough limiting the number of kids. I think you're going to have a lot of unhappy parents this summer, but um, nothing you can do about that. Yeah, it's over and lose. Like it, I, I think we'd rather have something than nothing. Um, I think we yeah. had 300 to 350 campers in a normal summer in one week, and now we're going to be down to 140, uh, 100 probably. Um, we did poll, just so you know, we did poll the parents. We used their database for users. Uh, and I think it was 70% to 30% um, actually said they feel comfortable bringing their kids back to camp, um, which what the threats being and precautions taken. Uh, I'd like to ask them, but I mean, and it is unknown. We could have, uh, we could have maybe a portion of the camp sign up, or we could have all of them sign up for the wait list. I, I don't know how it's going to look, or if people are going to feel comfortable doing it. But we'd at least like to try. Okay. In, in that regards, if if this plan doesn't work for some reason, if we find that we're getting a lot of complaints, or that we see. Um, a rise in somebody getting COVID, can we, do we have a plan in place to just say, okay, we're we'll shutting the schools down and the camps? Are you camps? Huh? Or, uh, pools or camps or both? I would say both, actually. So camps, we're putting uh, language in the registration that says that things uh, progress and we feel like the camp is unsafe and we put more out than us. And so I'll actually work with us. We can pull the camp and say, um, obviously safety is our number one concern. We can pull that. So, okay. Yeah. So with the okay. camp is taken care of and the signage uh, that we can have at the pool, we can, we can definitely make sure we include um, things can change on a daily basis. And we'll explore with Seagal and the land of the pools. And yeah. just, um, I think that the safeguard to have in place in, in case something does really go awry and we just, people know ahead of time, if something gets, if something goes adverse here, we're going to have the right to shut down the pool. So without, you know, we don't want people 
getting together and protesting with us because we decided that some this plan isn't working and we, we're going to need to shut down the pool. The Our biggest concern is the safety of the people that live in this town that are going to use these pools and the camps actually as well, but mostly the pools. So I, I don't want... I don't want to have one case, if we can, even one case of COVID coming out of the pools is is going to, you know, it's going to squeeze my one heart. too many. happy about it. I'll tell you that. So, so we have our, our regular enforcement track that we sort of do, and um, Angela does do regular inspections at the pool, and then we have this new sort of COVID enforcement track. So there will be regular check-ins, and we have the authority with any operation in town, if we think it's being done in an unsafe manner, and not putting in proper precautions, we can shut it down. Whether it's a business or a pool or you know a, a youth activity, we have the authority to shut it down in the name of public health. Obviously, that's not where we want to go. We want to be preventative, and we want to put in plans in place to control that. Uh, right. But we own that authority. Okay. But they test the water every half hour or so, Travis. Anyway. Correct. We have maintenance staff that checks the water uh, every half hour, uh, and we. I'd be happy actually once we get this all set up. Um, I know I don't know if you guys are more visual, but I'd be happy to meet you down at the pool like the day before we open, just to go over uh, so you can physically see uh, what we're hoping right. to do. I would, I would like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would be. I would like to see that to see it actually in play how it would work. Um, well, you've certainly done all your work, as, as well as Seagal and, and, and Stace, and, and these are the guidelines that came from the CDC that you have put together. So, you know, we have to have our confidence in somewhere. I don't know, board, what do you think? I, I feel that we have to have confidence somewhere. And, and yes. certainly Travis did the best and put it together for, he's really probably with us, Kathy, on securing the best, oh, I, you know. I think, yeah, I think he's done up now with you know some added protections i you know i just want everybody safe in this town that's all i care about yeah our goal certainly is to get the kids back to school in the fall and anything that will take them back from that is something we don't even want to be a part of that's why we're very leery with these pools and camps opening and staying well into august because if something happens then it's going to delay you know the school opening and that's really going to hinder the parents so you know i'm i'm okay with giving it a go and with close monitoring and do what's best for our town. I think the town is very fortunate to have Zagala and Travis and the rest of the group, um, Stacy, and, you know, taking um, these extra precautions and, and, you know, going ahead and saying that we can open the pools. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of towns that aren't go going to give the effort and the time um, to do that. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of towns that have closed pools. So, you know, thank you guys that uh, you did, you know, a yeoman's job to getting this thing up and running. And uh, hopefully the people of Norwood will appreciate it instead of being nasty about right. it, but people are. Yeah. And we will direct all calls to you, to the board, to the, to the, to, to Stacey and Sagal. <laughs> all right. So I guess we need to make a motion to take a vote on this. So that I we make a motion that we open Haas Pool with all the precautions that have been set forth by it. Uh, by uh, the CDC and that Travis has followed them to his capacity for the safety of our town. And I'll second that. Okay, so we have to take a verbal vote. Carolyn? Yes, I. Joan? I. And myself, Kathy Bishop, I. So all in favor? I. I. So I guess the pools can open. So what is the anticipated date, Travis? Uh, the 29th, but um, we're, I see a lot of towns that actually are opening pools are running into the problem of they've got such a consolidated season to get their pools prepped. So we're trying very, very hard to get the 29th um, to come to fruition because obviously we can train our staff and get the pools ready, or the pool ready. Um, so we're tentatively set for Monday, I think Monday the 29th, but that can change uh, based off of you can get everything ready. Okay, will you, will you let us know when you have things ready that we can take a look at what you have ready so that we can actually see it in motion type of thing? I, I, I coordinate that with the goal. Okay, excellent. 
Right. Anybody else have any questions? I have one for Seagal. Sure. Seagal, I have. I think I talked to you about it also before. This opening Norwood seminar that's from two to three on Thursdays. Who can participate in that, and what is the info that you're giving out? Um, so it's mainly, to be honest, with the planning department and the Friends of Norwood Center. Um, it's a oh, on the which one? Sorry, the one on Thursday or the one on the night? <laughs> um, I think it's Thursday. Like you said, anybody from restaurants that want to participate. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's two phone calls. So um, we're having a, um, a call for restaurants if they want to um, have an opportunity to ask questions um, from the health department of the new guidance that just came out. Um, and to also go Will you be answering those questions? Yep, myself and the planning department will be on there um, because some of the Okay. How do I access that? Do I go to my, do my go to meeting and you'll give a number or do we have to get on a list? Uh um, it, it's been publicized. I can send it out to the board too, if you're interested. Um, yeah, really, it's the Friends of Norwood Center that have been putting it out to local restaurants um, and doing the publicity, and also the um, it's been on the town social media page. But I can send it directly to the board, and they can share it. Okay, so so the town, how does it? Well, they'll find out. How does the town? How does a restaurant manager get on it? Just by calling and saying, "Put me on it," and then how does he get info? Does he? How does he get? Is it a phone call? Uh, I think it's an email list that the Friends of Norwood Center sends out information to. Okay. Okay. I love all the help that we're giving people. I think that the restaurants, um, any any restaurants and their owners need need all the help they can get to put this going forward. So I really appreciate everything that everybody does for this. Uh, there's so much to take in it. I say to the restaurant owners, be, be patient because everything changes every day. I mean, there's nothing so far that has stayed so my department is working very hard to keep all of us informed and then in turn you'll be informed so if we keep these up this would really be very helpful to them okay um i just want to thank travis for coming and clearing up a lot of questions that we had about the pools and the camps and i hope that it works as well as we anticipate that it will work um and that's all I have to say. I don't know about anybody else. Um, I didn't know if we wanted to, like, if it opens at the end of June, maybe um, the first week in August, maybe um, we could just, he could let Seagal know how things are, you know, progressing and any problems that he might have. Um, you know, just to keep us informed on how the pools are going. It doesn't have to be a formal meeting or anything, but just to kind of keep us in the loop on, you um, you know, any problems that he's having or any situations that he's really not uh, too keen on, on taking care of and maybe Seagal can help him out there. Yeah, I, I, we'll definitely stay in regular communication. Actually, routine inspections there. So we will be in communication with the, with the pools. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay. Do we have any other pools opening up uh, Seagal this summer? You know, like any of the um, ones that we inspect, will there be um, any of the other camps? Yeah, we have something like 23 pools in, the, in town, um, 25 okay. something in that range. Um, so we're still waiting on the, the pool guidance from the state. Um, like I okay. said, we have CDC guidance to sort of draft to, to come up with this control plan. But um, mm -hmm. we can't um, give a final word to any of the pools until we see the, the, town, the state guidance. We expect it any day now. But okay. They, I mean, the state. Okay. Okay. So, sooner we get these two people on board to help with the pools, I think, is probably going to be good too. Oh yeah. The more help, the better. Yeah. Right. Okay, okay. Sagal, will you will you keep us on another note? Will you keep us informed as to whether our two candidates um, accept or decline? <laughs> we have to start again. Oh. Yes, I will definitely let everybody know immediately. Hopefully not. <laughs> right. Um, so I, I just want to thank everybody to get through the, the technology hurdles here. Thank you, Travis, for working with us. Yes, thank you. Um, obviously, you work with Seagal uh, in, in the summer for both camps and pools. So it should hopefully be a, a good summer. And also just to... Just to Piggyback on the hurrahs there. I don't want to thank the board for being so 
sort of, and we, we just all work together great here from departments to boards and stuff. And it, we're just all really fortunate to have a good team all around. So thank you. We just want to stay. That's thank you. a major goal. So, and we've done a good job with it so far. So I don't want to slide back. With <laughs> great. All right, someone want to make a motion to adjourn or? I certainly will make a motion to adjourn. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion approved. Uh, meeting adjourned.